Life for University. I'm Tasker Brown. And I'm Kendall Matthews. And welcome to the Fall 2022 Falcon's Eye broadcast. We'll start off with the first ever Charlotte International Arts Festival, also known as the CIF, that took place in Ballantyne at Uptown Charlotte, featuring the Lunarium exhibit showcasing an inflatable piece of artwork, completely hand-sewn and crafted with its beautiful colors displayed by natural sunlight. Also part of that festival was the Headphone Disco, a form of silent disco outside of the Bachelor Museum. Both events had tickets ranging from only $5 to $10. Next, we have the Windy Hill Orchard and Cider Mill Apple Fest. Windy Hill Orchard is in York, South Carolina. They provide apple picking by reservation only and slots fill up fast. Hard apple cider pints are, and flights are sold along with non-alcoholic cider. Both pair great with their signature apple cider donuts and fried apple pies all of which is freshly made, and you can enjoy them while listening to live music from a featured band. They're closing apple picking towards the middle of November, but completely closing until December 23rd, and they will reopen again next year. That fresh, hard apple cider sounds great. Last but certainly not least, we have the North Carolina State Fair that was in Raleigh, North Carolina, starting October 13th and ending October 23rd. Having your run of the mill Ferris wheel, a wide assortment of foods and snacks, along with rigged fair games. Great place to spend quality time with family and possibly win a life-size stuffed animal. Although fall is coming to an end, we'll start to happily enter into Winter Wonderland. Festivities with Disney on Ice, the Nutcracker, and Winterfest at Carowinds. Here, let's go teach you all how to apply for jobs. As the 2022 fall semester comes to an end, Many students are thinking about applying for jobs. Whether it be for a future career or just a summer job, be on the lookout for job scams. According to the Better Business Bureau, job scams increased by 42% in 2021 from the past year. With the scams on the rise, the Falcons and I had a chance to sit down with Caroline Sowers, the Director of Internships and Career Planning at Pfeiffer, to get her advice on spotting job scams. My name's Claire Evanson. I'm sitting down with Caroline Sowers. Uh, just wanting to talk a little bit about job scams and how to avoid them. Yeah. So one thing that I would always recommend um, when you see a job online and you are a little bit unsure of whether it is a legitimate job or not, because scams definitely do exist. One of those things is I carefully look at the job ad. And in general, if something seems too good to be true, it probably is. Um, if you see a red flag, you're definitely going to want to dig a little deeper. So the next step I would do after I see a job ad that I'm concerned about um, or that raises those red flags is to go to the company's website and really investigate the website. Get a feel for whether it seems like a legitimate company or not and go to the job postings because even sometimes an ad, a scam will um, try to mimic a company that really exists. So I would begin by looking for the specific job there. Be sure it matches the ad. From there, I go to Google and I search, you know, whatever the company name is, job scam, and see, have people posted that they've been scammed by this supposed company? Of course, if things come up, there's your answer. If not, it doesn't necessarily mean it's not a scam, but you've got a better indication that maybe it's real. A third tip that I would do next after that is use um, Google Earth, you know, look up the actual company business um, address and make sure it's a real place. So if you go to that street view, you can see if an actual company exists. Sometimes you'll see nothing or something that's clearly not the company and then you can raise a red flag there as well. And then I would also look for contact information apart from the job ad and reach out. Pay attention if spelling errors, you know, poor grammar and spelling is a red flag to me that something may not be legitimate. Finally, be very, very hesitant to give any of your personal information to a, a supposed recruiter. You shouldn't be getting giving your bank account information to anybody um, who's, who's recruiting you for a job if they're asking for really personal information. Don't give it. Stop. Do some research. The final thing is if a student is unsure, I am happy to do this for a student. And I have a few more resources available to me. Um, like reaching out to other career services professionals. What's some just general information you'd like to plug from the, the career office? Yes, I love that. So definitely reach out. I'm here to help. I'm help, here to help with the job application process, figuring out what kinds of jobs you might be interested in, resume, cover letter development, um, all of those things. 
Um, and then we also have the Virtual Career Center on Blackboard. It's under organization. There, I have some job postings and internship postings. Um, and then LinkedIn is a great resource for job searching. Indeed is a great resource. Google has a good job search engine now as well. Um, so definitely look at the job postings we have and the internship postings we have on the Virtual Career Center, but don't stop there. There is a lot available. We appreciate Caroline Sowards taking the time to talk with us. If you have any questions about jobs, internships, or career opportunities, Caroline is a great resource and loves talking with students. She can be reached by email at caroline.sowards at pfeiffer.edu. For the first time since before COVID-19, Pfeiffer Athletics participated in an athletic media day led by Casey Hobbick and Casey Kohler. Fall athletes gathered in the Knapp gym and took some awesome pictures. Photographer Casey Hobbick was impressed by the creativity of the athletes. Let's hear what he has to say about this event. Due to COVID and due to planning and organization, um, you know, it was uh, organizing a media day is challenging, but it's something that we wanted to provide student athletes. Um, not only are we doing it to fulfill some necessary requirements from our conference and the NCAA, mm -hmm. but it's also just a really fun time yeah, to, <laughs> to let athletes personalities come out and shine. Um, and then to repurpose or to utilize that content on social media throughout the uh, season uh, is a lot of fun too, to see it out there. And it, and it just creates more content um, at a different level, uh, a more personal level, I guess, rather than game day photos and things like that as well. Mm -hmm. So um, it, it, it's just a good practice. It's a, it, we have to do it to provide those things for NCAA and, and their mm -hmm. conference. But it's also a fun thing to do to see on social media and have yeah. uh, other players, you know, player alumni players, parents, things like that, the commentary on social media to chime in and, and give them another opportunity to to sound off and support our athletes is, is a lot of fun. You mm -hmm. know? And it's just something I would like to see become a a regular thing we do. Yeah. It sounds like Media Day was quite a hit and we should be seeing some more pictures from our spring sports and possibly some video footage as well. Hebbick also spoke about the importance of Media Day and how this really allows our teams to step up their social media presence for recruiting and future plans. With all this hype about the photos, I'm dying to see how these athletes incorporated their pets and props in their photos. That was awesome. I really didn't expect to see that many pets, but you know how Pfeiffer students love their animals. Thank you to Casey Habick, Casey Kohler, and all who helped with Media Day. The athletes appreciate this fun opportunity to express themselves and show off some school pride on social media. And now a spotlight on Madison Lowry. Pfeiffer University has welcomed Madison Lowry, cross country and track runner, who has been named the Women's USA South Conference Champion. We now have a short clip from the USA South Instagram of Madison. All right, here with Madison Lowry, our 2022 USA South Women's Cross Country Meet Champion uh, from Pfeiffer University. Madison, congratulations. Thank you. Uh, tell me about your race today. You led throughout. Um, so just how did you feel? Um, I was very nervous, but I was led through with um, adrenaline. Um, wasn't really sure how to uh, run the race and I just kept making um, 10 little second surges which pushed me through. And I know you were really close to a PR so that must have been exciting for you. By a second, yes. All right, well congratulations and best of luck moving forward. And tag your it. When asked how does it feel to be named the women's conference champion, Madison Lowry said that's a tough one. I don't feel any different or superior. I do feel strong and confident going into regionals and hopefully nationals competing. Knowing I was a second off my PR alone gives me a great confidence booster. I race in the moment because I'll never get that moment back. I had fun being with my team, false starting and still coming in third when we were going to be seated fifth. 
with only five to score. Madison has been a huge impact to the cross-country program here at Pfeiffer. We also asked Madison how she liked her time here at Pfeiffer as well as being a part of the cross-country team. She stated, I have enjoyed my time here, especially in a breathable environment where I'm accepted everywhere, including by my team. Being able to bond with the women's team at the same time train with the men's team has given me a place and a chance to grow and not be downgraded for anything whether it's one to push past my limits. With commuting, I live here and also have a relationship with many people. I love having access to other courses to run on and changing up the scenery and the terrain. These ATs and having one-on-one time with them has benefited me greatly as they are also able to concentrate and fix whatever issue there may be, even if it's pain or even an injury, while allowing me to pursue my passions even with that injury. The cross-country and track teams are growing in numbers as well. Coach Marchenko has been a great addition to the programs, being the coach who took the Pfeiffer men's team to the championships in 2002 in one conference. This cross-country season, Marchenko has taken leaps and bounds, getting both our women's and men's teams stronger. At the USA South Conference meet, the women's team was supposed to place fifth, and they left in third place. Coach Marchenko stated, We are making progress in the areas and culture and expectations. I was very pleased how both teams competed at conference. Both teams took a great step in developing into the type of program that I envision that we can be. Now let's go check out the sports review. Fall sports are coming to a close here at Pfeiffer University. Ellen McCone interviewed each head coach to get the inside scoop on how their seasons went down. Pfeiffer Women's Volleyball finished 8th in the conference, which gave them a seat in the conference playoffs. The interview with Melissa Ferris, the head volleyball coach, took place before going into the conference playoffs. And Ferris says she is looking forward to seeing her team play with grit and determination. She says they have had good practices and are getting 1% better every day. The women's soccer team at Pfeiffer had a very young team this year and were unfortunately plagued with injury at the beginning of the season. When looking towards the future, Katie Cobb, the head women's soccer coach, said they are expecting 11 more freshmen next year. With such a young team, it's exciting to see what another year will bring. The men's soccer team here at Pfeiffer University had growing pains this season and finished seventh in their conference. Tony Fatty Coney, the head men's soccer coach, said his highlight of the season was the game against Mary Baldwin. He said the team showed up when they needed to, and the ending result was Pfeiffer winning 4-1. Pfeiffer's cross-country team has had a very good season. Madison Lowry was the runner of the week four times this season and won USA South Runner of the Year. Sawyer Helms won Rookie of the Week this season as well. Bob Marchenko, the head cross-country and track coach, said their team has been growing together and strengthening their culture. We are excited to see what's to come for each of these teams and we wish the best of luck to our spring sports as their seasons approach. Up next, we are hopping on over to the world of TV and film with Tyler and Sam. They will be reviewing the new hit shows, HBO Max's Game of Thrones, House of the Dragon, and Amazon Prime Video's Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power. They will also be reviewing the long-awaited Marvel Studios' Black Panther Wakanda Forever. Game of Thrones, House of Dragon by HBO Max. There are 10 episodes that are all about an hour long in the first season of the show. House of the Dragon is based on George R.R. R. Martin's Fire and Blood. The show serves as a prequel for the hit show Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones, House of Dragon faced a big challenge with its debut season. Game of Thrones fans were very disappointed with the last season or two of Game of Thrones, so they were very skeptical about the prequel show. The first episode really had to try and draw fans back into the world of Westeros. The first episode did just that. House of the Dragon reels you in within the first few minutes of the first episode and keeps you hooked and guessing throughout the season. The show skips ahead a few years between episodes a few times, and though it took a few minutes to get used to, about 15 minutes into the episode you have already forgotten about the time jump. The casting crew did a fantastic job with casting the four actresses to play both young and older versions of Rhaenyra Targaryen and Alicent Hightower. All four actresses did an incredible job and were honestly maybe the highlights of the show for me. The soundtrack was very good and the classic theme of Game of Thrones was nice to hear during the opening credits each week. The acting was terrific overall and multiple intertwining storylines made the show very entertaining. I also loved how the show hints at what is to come in Game of Thrones. The finale definitely ended with a bang and heavily hints at what is to come in Season 2. I will most certainly be tuning in 
for Season 2 and will rate the show a solid 8.5 out of 10. There had not yet been a sunrise. But even then, there was light. The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power by Amazon Prime Video. There are eight episodes that are all about an hour long in the first season of the show. The Rings of Power is based on the novel The Lord of the Rings and its appendices by J.R.R. Tolkien. The series is set in the Second Age of Middle-earth, thousands of years before Tolkien's The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings. There are many actors in The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power. Morfid Clark plays Galadriel. Robert Aramayo plays Elrond. Markella Cavanaugh plays Nori. Charlie Vickers plays Halbrand. Ismael Cruz Cordova plays Arondir. Owen Arthur plays Prince Durin IV. Peter Mullen plays King Durin III. Maxim Baldry plays Isildur. And Daniel Wayman plays The Stranger. As the most expensive TV show ever made, The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power faced a huge amount of pressure to live up to the hype. It faced many challenges such as trying to satisfy the hardcore J.R.R. Tolkien fans while also trying to draw in new fans who don't know much about Middle-earth. The writers and directors had a difficult task set out for them. They had to world-build in a sense and introduce the audience to many new characters in the first season, while also trying to keep the characters we have seen before in The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings movies true to what they have been portrayed to in the past. The show is a prequel to The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings, and while it is based on some of Tolkien's work, the writers and directors had to walk a thin line in trying to keep true to Tolkien's writings, while also trying to create mystery and new storylines. The huge investment by Amazon paid off, in my opinion. The show is not perfect. The first few episodes were slow-paced, but once the show picked up pace, the intertwining storylines got very interesting. The last few episodes were fantastic, and the finale was very strong and leaves you wishing for more episodes. I would definitely be tuning in for season two and would rate the show a solid eight out of ten. Black Panther Wakanda Forever by Marvel Studios. The runtime for Black Panther Wakanda Forever is two hours and 41 minutes. This movie deals with the tragic loss of Chadwick Boseman and his iconic character T'Challa, while also introducing new characters to the MCU such as Riri Williams and Namor. The story revolves around the nation of Wakanda and its state of mourning the late King T'Challa. The director of the movie is Ryan Coogler. There are many big time actors returning and joining the cast of Black Panther Wakanda Forever. Angela Bassett plays Ramonda. Tanak Huerta plays Namor. Martin Freeman plays Everett Ross. Denai Gidira plays Okoye. Lupita Nyong'o plays Nakia. Letitia Wright plays Shuri. Michaela Cole plays Anika, Winston Duke plays M'Baku, and Dominique Thorne plays Riri Williams. The plot was very interesting and dealt with grief and loss in a touching way while also feeling very real and raw. Ramonda, Shuri, and Namor were highlights of the movie for me as leaders slash royalty in their separate kingdoms. There were some fun cameos throughout the movie and we were also introduced to Riri Williams. She will be getting her own TV show soon. The story does not really connect to the larger MCU besides the whole Namor and his people part of the movie. The movie as a whole did a great job of honoring Chadwick Boseman and while you could feel his absence throughout the movie, the cast did a wonderful job at portraying the emotions you feel when losing a loved one. The scenes that dealt with his loss were very heavy and brought out many emotions. The soundtrack was incredible and the post credit scene was amazing. I would say this movie is a solid 9 out of 10 and a very good sequel to the first Black Panther. I would be watching this movie again as soon as possible and would recommend watching it in theaters or when it releases on Disney Plus in the coming months. Thanks Tyler and Sam. Now let's check on what's going on behind the counter in the cafeteria. Every day here at Fife University, hundreds of hungry students pour into the calf throughout the day. The calf, which is open for three meals a day provides lots of choices for most students to choose from, ranging from pastas to fried chicken and a salad bar. And don't worry for you, for you students that have a specific diet or meal plan. The CAF will cater to your every need to make you feel at home. But wait, there's more. How can you have a meal without dessert? 
There are many dessert options to make sure you have your sweet tooth is taken care of, whether it's cookies and cake or Rice Krispie treats and ice cream. Let's take a deeper dive into the calf as I was able to speak with some of the staff. I decided to work in the calf because it's very flexible. I can come work into my classes. I only work 30 minutes for an hour. They come in and work and they let me work and I make my own stuff. So next time you go to the calf, make sure to look at the lovely staff and tell them thank you for the amazing hard work they put in every day to make sure we are all fed. Now let's take a sneak peek into the locker rooms. Pfeiffer men's basketball team has entered their 2022-23 season with a newly renovated locker room. The renovations started in the summertime and were completed in mid-September. The renovations that were made to the locker room include LED lights, speakers, a mini fridge, TV, posters, and plaques that show the history of men's basketball here at Pfeiffer. A complete remodeling of the lockers themselves was done as well. The walls of each player's locker is now made of chalkboard to give the players the luxury of writing anything they please. Here is Dante Forrester Jagaru with an inside look of the locker room and some thoughts from the players and the coaches. Good, smooth, uh, adding more stuff to it, but it looks good, I like it. How you feel about the new locker room? New locker room looks pretty good. Worked hard for it, man, so I loved it. It's nice, man. It's nice. Yeah, hard work been done on it, so, man. That's for a project. What a great way to get our men's basketball team off to a good start. Now let's take a step out of the locker room and into the court to take a look at your men's basketball team. As the basketball season gets closer, the fight for men's basketball team is hyped and ready to play. With a new reloaded roster combined with new faces along with returners, the Falcons look to hit the ground running. We got a chance to speak to a couple of the players and hear how they are feeling about the upcoming season. Uh, for this season, I'm very excited for uh, basically the whole new team. Like everybody pretty much left last year. Now just dealing with a bunch of new guys, uh, trying to figure out where we fit in, uh, figure out how to win games together and just learn each other. So I'm pretty excited about all of that. Um, I'm just really excited for the season to get going. Uh, we got a lot of road games this year. So I feel like, you know, that's going to be fun. Um, yeah, you know, we got a lot of young talent coming in, a really talented group overall. So I feel like, you know, that's going to give us a lot of wins. And then, you know, the more you win, the more fun you have. So I'm really excited for the season to start. Uh, this is Jalen Hamilton, one of the five for basketball players. And I'm excited for this season because I know I have a great group of people together. I feel like we all work well together. We just went to Averitt and beat them by 2018. We lost it last year. So I just feel like overall, this year we can go pretty far and I don't see anybody in conference stopping us. So I just feel like we can really make it, win, make it happen. As you can see, your Falcons basketball team is ready to take flight and take this season by storm. Next year, we'll see some big changes. Let's go find out about the four day instructional week. Starting in the fall semester of 2023, Pfeiffer University will change to a four day instructional week. The new schedule will be similar to the current Tuesday and Thursday schedule. Fridays will be used for extracurricular activities called Falcon Fridays. Falcon Fridays are intended for students to have more time and flexibility. Falcon Fridays are for students to have additional time for various uses such as work or even field trips. Falcon Fridays are also an opportunity to attend Fire for Life events. With this change, there are hopes to bring in more events and give students the chance to have a dedicated time to attend them. Although classes will no longer be on Fridays, the university will still run as normal with faculty and staff on campus, regular cafeteria hours, and facilities remaining open. Many students were in favor of the change to a four-day instructional week. A survey was sent out last spring to all students asking them how they would feel if the schedule were to change. The results of the survey showed 78% of the students that took the survey were in agreement of the change. Now that the change is official, we asked students how they currently feel about the change to a four-day instructional week. How do you feel about the change to the four-day instructional week? Um, I feel that the class is going to be longer, yes, but the weekends will be way longer. So people that's like farther away from home can go home for the weekends and spend more time with their families and not have to go for one night and come back. That's really the main thing. And we, you can get the more of the college experience that way. 
Um, well, I like it, even though the classes would be longer, but I just feel like it'll give a lot more time to get work done, go to events, and just give people more time that like to go home on the weekends. And also, if there's anybody that works, I think it'll be really good for them. The change to the four day instructional week is going to benefit me tremendously because it's going to allow me to do my assignments and participate in internships that I may not have been able to do in the previous way. It was better. Honestly, I'm going to like it. I think uh, the extra day is going to be good for us. Um, take a day off, homework, stuff like that. I think I'm going to enjoy it. And what are you going to do with the extra day? What I'm going to do with the extra day is I'm going to spend time going back home, seeing my family. And because last year I rarely, rarely talked to them. So I'm just, and I live like far away. So I'm going to use that extra day as a drive day to go to Boone and stay the whole week. Probably sleep a lot. <laughs> um, but for me, I'll probably go home on the weekends and spend more time with my family. Uh, with the extra day, I'm gonna get caught up on work. Um, I may even work in the hospital. I can get a job. So it's gonna be very ben beneficial to us. Definitely spend it a lot on like doing like big assignments like papers. Um, practice, I guess. Uh, I hope we still have practice on Fridays. That would kind of suck, I guess. But, uh, yeah. Fife University is ensuring that students' voices are being heard and the changes being made are for the betterment of student life. The Campus Activities Board does a great job holding fun events for students to meet new people and have fun with their friends. Some examples of events CAP has held in the first semester are the phone party, the kickback, Bowling, Luau, Powder Puff, Silent Library, Spooky Bingo, along with many other great events. CAB has been planning even more fun events for the upcoming spring semester. Some of those great events will be Plush, Guess the Ponytail, Eastgate Movie Night, Trivia Night, Basketball Team Trivia, and Basketball Spirit Night, along with March Madness. I'm most excited for the Basketball Spirit Nights because I can't wait for the season to start. It has been a long and tiring semester, but also an eventful one. That's right. I know mine has been very eventful and tiring. Some of my favorite events so far have been going to all of the sporting events, the kickback, bowling, and my favorite event so far has been the powder puff game. Tasha got the chance to ask many different students around campus about how their first semester has been so far. Let's see what people had to say about their semester. How was your semester, Matthew Sharpie? My first semester was great, you know. I uh, had a great time going to all the events, had some good grades. It was a great fun time. <laughs> I'm here with Michael Holler. How was your semester? It was hard at first. I, I had a hard time adjusting to classes. But honestly, my RA helped me a lot. He had a lot of fun events. We did a lot of stuff, a lot of fun stuff on campus. So that really helped me get through the mental aspect of things. And, you know, I've really locked into my classes over the last couple months, and I've started doing a lot better, so. Thank you. Chilling. Yes, sir. Thank you. I'm here with Daniel Runkle. How was your semester so far? Um, not gonna lie, you know, easiest. I mean, I thought it was gonna be a lot harder. Tasker Brown, best RA hands down, you know what I'm saying? Made it a lot easier, you know what I'm saying? Class in, class out, you know what I'm saying? Best university in the world. I'm not even gonna lie, you feel me? Fight for university, let's go! Sounds like an eventful semester so far for the students.